Good morning, Porsche. Good morning. Red Dirt Preacher here. Might have to go underneath the name change, that's all. But, you know, it's still Laney at the end of the day. Welcome in, welcome in. I want to tell y'all something. You know, I don't really look up for a reason, and I don't go to church for a reason, because I like what the Lord is doing here by His own hand. Amen. And I don't want to mess that up with anything, out, you know, with any other water out there in the world. So when I keep my head down, beautiful things happen, okay, and then I come around and tell it. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I've had a love relationship ongoing now with the Lord for about seven years. The Lord dated me. He courted me. We fought. He slept on the couch. I mean, me, God, Jesus and I, oh, we've been around the mulberry bush, the garage, the kitchen, and the living room floor chasing, chasing each other. Uh-oh. Come on, Marley. Don't ruin a good thing. Really barking at flies. Sky raisins, like we call them. Anyway, I got this living. I just I just love the Lord out loud. If you haven't noticed, it's kind of what I do. It's really, he's the flame in my life. Anyway, to tell you this, Tell you what, every time that, that I, people call it downloading, receiving, channeling, prophesying, I mean, uh, call it what you want, put it in whatever bag you're comfortable with, but I tell you what, when I get knowing from the Lord, I know, good golly, as my ass has got a freckle on it, that he kisses me right here. The Lord, yeah, I said that. It's cursy church, come on, y'all know me, come on, get awake out there. I have you rather have you judging me than judging others. <laughs> All right, so when the Lord spends time with me, uh, and I, I, I ruminate and revelate and get ahas and all the beautiful wisdom that is talking with the Lord. When he does that, it's like telepathy on, it's just telepathy super fast. It's the language of, of no words, the language of love. And, and when Jesus, when I feel like he just kisses me on the forehead, it's just like hitting the pineal gland and you just boom, you have, you have all this knowledge. You know, and it's not all at once. All the epiphanies that I've gotten have taken years. There's over 300 videos here on the porch. Um, you know, but when that happens, it's an exchange between Christ and I. And I always looked at it, and I don't know why. And I love it when I start sentences with, I don't know why. Because when you don't know why after you're conscious, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the Lord. That's why. So I used to talk about this a lot. And I, I always said that it was like sharing pomegranate with the Lord. Like you just sit down and just have a have a bite of pomegranate, as if the tree of life that we were told not to not to eat from was literally pomegranate. I just always said that, always said that, always said that. The other day when I was receiving from the Lord, it was such a beautiful exchange between us, boy. I was in love, I tell you. And I, you know what? Radiating was so much love that I actually looked at a friend across the table, and my friend looked at me, and he's like. Wow, you you you've got you got a spark in your eye. What is that you're wearing? And he literally said to me, "You look so good in love." And there's nobody else sitting there, you know. And, and he knew, we both knew what was happening. He knows that he knows that I was talking to the Lord. And and sometimes when I get done exchanging with the Lord, it, the glow is on me, the fires in my eye. You might as well have thought that a lover just just called me on the telephone. I'm lit up from the inside out, guys. That's what love is about. Amen. So anyway, point of the story is, is, is I always used to consider this eating pomegranate with God, and I didn't really know why. The reason I always said that, and I always, just in my own mind, not checking with the world, I always said through my mouth that, you know, if, if heaven really had, you know, if, if, <laughs> kid, you know, if heaven's got this big tree of life, and it's wisdom and knowledge, oh, wow, that I'm really sharing that tree with the Lord, the fruit of that tree. And, you know, and many sermons ago, many years ago, God let me know. We're going to segue over here to a red dirt road for just a second. It's important. We'll get back here in just a second. Red dirt road. Many years ago, uh, it came to my knowledge as the Lord again was, was raising me up in him. And he let me know. He's like, it's almost as if you guys didn't let me finish. It's like I didn't say never eat from the tree of life. He just said don't. And, you know, and before we say don't, we've already got, you know, Eve and Adam have an apple pie. So we got a problem there. I know that the Lord put up impressed upon me. He never meant to say never eat from that tree of life. And and don't. It was more or less a a wait for me and we'll eat from it together. You can't partake of that tree unless we're together. And the other night I correlated this to a layman's term like how am I gonna teach the crowd 
Let me show you how I could teach this to you or get you to feel it the way I'm feeling it. Sex is one thing here in this life. Okay, sucks if you're doing it by yourself. It's got its own name. But sex is a, is a, is a coming together of two, literally. A coming together of two. And, you know, in the Bible, you know, we're two come together. We're love meets, yo. We're love meets. Come on, get a higher frame of thinking. So, you know, when we're with Jesus, when we're with Holy Spirit, and we're eating from that pomegranate tree, and I'm getting knowledge out the buku, and I'm getting wisdom, I'm sharing in that. I'm partaking in that. And I can't do that on my own. I can't eat from this tree alone. I'm only served black and white text. I'm only served what I know here on the world. That only gets you so far. But when you're eating pomegranate with the Lord, that's a, that's an exchange of energy where two have come together. And when I walk away from that pomegranate, what are you doing, Lainey? I'm having a picnic with Jesus and we're eating pomegranate. Do not disturb. You know what I'm saying? Because when I'm eating pomegranate with the Lord, that is a coming together with him and we're then sharing and exchanging. And it's so intimate because what the Lord has given me isn't sex. What the Lord is giving me is seeding me. He's seeding me. Do you see how that's like sex we have down here? The Lord, I sit with the Lord and he seeds me with knowledge, with his knowledge from the pomegranate fruit that we're sharing. And that's where I got the idea that, like, how am I, how is this consciousness evolving right here off my back porch when I typically never look up? And the reason is because the Lord is che teaching all of us all on a holy curriculum. I just take, I partake in my holy curriculum off the back porch. And so my family knows that I talk about eating pomegranate with the Lord. And that's because I'm in, a, I'm in an intimate exchange with the Lord. Okay? And he's seeding me. All right, so the other night, now this has been going on for many years, and I did make many sermons in the past about the tree of life and how we weren't not ever supposed to eat from it. God didn't smack our hands and say, don't ever. You know, he meant we'll share it together. We'll, this, you can only have it when we come together. If you're with the right person and you're having sex, you're, quote, making love, and that is a treasure island that only you and that other person have the keys to unlock to visit together. You're not going there alone, Okay. When it's done right, amen. So it's as if God has the keys, or I've got the keys, and when we get together, that's the unlocking of the paradise that it is to be um, letting the Lord seed me and letting me be submissive to that seeding. That's a lot like two coming together. And so in a heaven-esque way to me eating that pomegranate and sharing that at the, at the, at the tree of life with the Lord is, is in, my, in my layman brain, you know, why did I look like I was covered in love and had a spark and a flame in my eye the other night? Well, that's because Jesus and I were, well, do not disturb. I mean, that's heaven's version of sex, you know, right? This exchanging that is impregnating me with flame, with fire, with inspiration, with knowledge, with wisdom, with the fruit of my, of my holy husband, right? That's the holy, like, that's the highest level you can get it. So the other night when I was um, visiting with the Lord, the Lord was visiting with me. It was really intimate. And he was letting me know all about Mary Magdalene. And I thought it was so wonderful. So uh, that's when I, I actually looked to my friend. And he's like, what is all over your face? Where are you? A thousand. You're right here, but you're a thousand yard stare. Where are you? And my friend knows that I prophesize that I, God talks to me. And, you know, and, and that I freeze frame sometimes because I'm listening. So he knows that my, my best friend, you know, like he, he knows that look on my face. Like, hey, where'd you go? Hang on. Jesus and I are eating pomegranate. And boy, you could tell because of the look on my face. And I just wanted you to know that. And here's something else you need to know if you're still tagging along. Here's the important part. We say the important part for the real good listeners. The other day, for the first time in years, I asked the Lord while I was sitting here, while I had that, that rose, that primrose on my cheek from being in love with him. And uh, I had just, um, you know, sitting there with him. I asked the Lord, I said, how come all these years I always say I'm eating pomegranate with you? What's up with the pomegranate? In fact, that's exactly how I said it to the Lord. What's up with the pomegranate? As I ask, I have a living witness friend who's sitting across the table from me watching me work, because this is how I work, behind the scenes. And I asked Jesus, I said, what's up with the pomegranate? And sorry about the dinging, guys. Sorry about that. Um, Jesus said to me, watch this, kid. He said, it's pomegranate for a reason. I don't know who told you it was an apple tree. 
Now, see, you're not going to get this from the Bible. I don't read the Bible, not because I'm, I'm against it. I just, I'm lazy. I'm lazy. And the and Lord knows this about me. So I'm learning the Bible by, by literally walking through it. And that's the job of life anyway. So I'm not missing these seats. Amen. So I asked Jesus why the pomegranate. And he said to me, I heard the word calyx or salix. I didn't know the word. I kept hearing it. So calyx. I kind of spell it out and I kind of Google Google barf it onto my Googler. And calyx actually is the protective covering of a bud, of a tree. I'll look it up on your own. But basically, it's the crown of a fruit. Okay, and while I was looking this up, I understood that calyx, Jesus kept telling, I heard it three or four times. He kept saying to me, as a Googler is working, God was saying to me, I'm going to show you the crown on my head. I'm going to show you the crown on my head. I'm going to show you the crown on my head. And I'm like, okay, when I Google her here, it gets, okay, calyx. And I was reading the flower definition of calyx. I don't have a green thumb, so I was getting lost. So I always do what this prophet does. I got a dictionary, and we'll roll down to the Latin form of the word. It's always important. I always find mana in that. And when I look at calyx, it is literally the, the it, it, it's the, guys, oh my gosh. If you go look up a pomegranate. Okay, a pomegranate on Google's images is going to be labeled in three parts. The top part of a pomegranate actually is shaped like a king's crown, and it's labeled calyx. Oh, see how much you can learn not? It used to joke that you could throw me in a cave, and I would come out knowing stuff with writings all over the wall. And it's like, who was talking to you for the 20, 30 years we threw you in a cave? Uh, Jesus Christ, and I wasn't alone at all. And I come out smarter without books than when you threw me in the hole in the first place. You know, that's the Holy Spirit, and it's alive. And now I can understand, tip my hat to Mary Magdalene, you spent 30 years in a cave. She wasn't alone, amen. She wasn't alone. She's spending time with him the way that I'm spending time with him now, learning that he's the calyx. And what is, and why God said the, why he pointed out calyx to me is because calyx is directly related to a pomegranate. Okay, it's a fruit with the king's crown at the top of the fruit. Now, an apple has a calyx too, but it's at the bottom of the apple. See the difference there? Now, I asked God, I said, whoa, if it's a pomegranate that's really the tree of life, you know, that's, a, that's, you know, doesn't change my world from flowing and everything, but some people will get really hooked up on the fact that it was an apple tree, a pomegranate tree. Gig on this crowd. The Romans back in the day at that time, they were actually referred to the pomegranate as a grubble apple, grub apple, or, or something of that sort. So it kind of got dumbed down to being an apple. But let me tell you here, with a Mary Magdalene heart, I know that whenever I'm eating, at the tree of life, getting knowledge, getting wisdom, and partaking of that energy with the Lord as He is seeding me, and I'm in gestation of all the good He's putting in me, boys and girls. That's a pomegranate. And the reason that God picked the pomegranate, I didn't know this because I didn't read the Bible. Pomegranate shows up a lot in the Bible, and, and well, at least four times. Pomegranate was something that God told Aaron, Moses, check, check, check me on the crowd here. I didn't know this, but God said, I directly told them boys to put a pomegranate and gold bells at the hem of the priestly robes. Wow. Solomon built a temple, and, you know, and in that temple was a grand archway covered in pomegranates. It's like those that know, that have been there, they come back with pomegranate juice on their lips, you know, you really know that, that this is the pomegranate. Inside the pomegranate is a l thousands and thousands and thousands of seeds, as if God is saying, I am the king, I'm the original king head, I'm the original ca calyx of the, the fruit of the land, and all the seeds of the generation belong in me. But also that pomegranate is very much like the female, like a female's womb. And Jesus seeds that womb and makes it full of, fr of potential fruit. Uh, you know, so there was so much here. And now Lainey knows why. The, the, uh, the other night when I was spending intimate time with the Lord, and I just said, hey, what's up with the pomegranate? Boy, he has something to say of why it was a pomegranate. He'll show you the crown on his head. He's the calyx of our fruit, and he is the many seeds. You know, it's all of that is Jesus. How sweet is that? So to me, uh, being intimate, like mattress dancing, is the best way we can do it through love here on the earth. That sex, that coming together. You know, and, and, and when you're with Jesus, that coming together of two, that pomegranate, that seeding event takes place, not on a mattress, but underneath the tree of life, darling.
There's a, it's a higher way of exchanging love energy, right on? I just wanted to share that. I think it's important. All right, anyway, till next time we're growing. All right, so stay connected.